When we look at the vast expanse of the world around us, it seems almost unbelievable that it is made up of particles one million times smaller than these grains of sand. In fact, everything that I see is built out of less than 100 different types of tiny building block, the atoms. Over the last 200 years, science has moved ever closer to explaining how all of this is put together. Our understanding of atoms has been fundamental to this process, and my aim is to give you that knowledge. However, the first thing I want to give you is a sense of scale. Just exactly how big is an atom? To answer that question, we're going to need some units. And the GCSE exam boards in the UK will expect you to be able to use these correctly and to convert between them. Let's start out with the standard unit of length, the metre. This is a good unit for us to use to interpret the world as we experience it. A metre is approximately one pace for an adult, and as humans, we vary between approximately one and two metres tall. The metre is, however, not an ideal unit to talk about atoms. We're going to need to divide it up a bit. In fact, we're going to need to divide it up a lot. Atoms are less than one billionth of a metre across. The smallest atom is helium, with a radius of around 31 trillionths of a metre. And even the largest, cesium, has a radius of only 260 trillionths of a metre. Now, these numbers are mind-bogglingly small, and so I'm going to take us down to the scale of atoms in a series of steps. In order to do that, we're going to need to use some standard subdivisions of a metre. Scientists generally use factors of a thousand when breaking down a core unit like the metre, and each one adds its own unit prefix in front of the basic unit. However, there are a couple of exceptions to this rule, and I'll point them out as we go on our journey from the size of a person to the scale of the atoms that make up every part of our bodies and the world around us. The GCSE examiner will expect you to be familiar with these divisions and their associated prefixes, but don't worry because I will recap these at the end of the video to help you learn them. I stand here approximately 1.8 metres tall, and a hundred times smaller than that would be 1.8 centimetres long. That is approximately the height of my thumbnail. Ten times smaller again, and we find ourselves with the millimetre. This freckle on my cheek is approximately 1.8 millimetres across and is therefore 1,000 times smaller than I am. So far, we've met two divisions of the metre. The centimetre, one hundredth of a metre, and the millimetre, a thousandth. We're now going to need an even smaller unit. We're going to go down by a thousand times again. This is the micrometer. A micrometer is one millionth of a metre, and therefore you get one million micrometres in one metre. Although the micrometer is still far too large a division to use when talking about the scale of atoms, it is a very useful unit to talk about the building blocks of our bodies, our cells. Here, we can no longer use our eyes unaided. The smallest structure that we can resolve with our own eyes is about 0.1 millimetres, that is, the tip of a needle or the thickness of a human hair. This is one of my hairs seen under a microscope and is around about 120 micrometres across. Under a powerful light microscope, we get this image of some human skin cells. 
each one being around 30 micrometers across. Each of these cells is therefore about 50,000 times smaller than I am. Journeying inside the cell's nucleus requires the use of electron microscopes, and now we encounter our first molecules. These long chains of atoms contain our genetic code. This is our DNA. These chains are actually very long indeed, totaling nearly two meters in length inside every single one of your cells. But they are incredibly thin, being less than one micrometer across. In fact, we are now going to need the next division of the meter, the nanometer. That nano prefix means one billionth, and these DNA chains are approximately 10 nanometers across. We are now close to the end of our journey. The atoms are within reach, and the very best microscope technology we have at our disposal can actually resolve them as small, fuzzy spheres. These are the atoms, each one around 0.1 nanometers across, and therefore 10 billion times smaller than you or me. Now, you might hear another unit being used when we talk about the size of atoms, the angstrom. One angstrom is a 10 billionth of a meter, and therefore an atom is approximately one angstrom across. However, the GCSE exam boards will not use this unit in your exams, and I only mention it in case you hear about it in other places. So, this completes our journey, and we have met four unit prefixes on the way. To recap them, that is a centimeter, that is a hundredth of a meter, the millimeter, a thousandth of a meter, and the scale of freckles and small marks on our skin. The micrometer was next at one millionth of a meter, and the scale of our cells and the nucleus within them. The nanometer, one billionth of a meter, completed our journey and is the scale of atoms and molecules. So, take a look at the tip of your finger. It's probably about one centimeter or 10 millimeters across. You might just be able to make out the tiny ridges that make up your fingerprint. Each one is 100 micrometers wide. Now, realize that we could line up 100,000 atoms across that single ridge. And that gives you the scale of the atom. In our next video, we will look at the particle model and what scientists mean when they use the word particle.